Or, I hope God lets us go fishing. When you go to heaven with your everlasting life, that makes you an angel. And Peter and Moses or somebody lines you all up and passes out crown and hearts. I'm sure I, go, I take music lessons. Mrs. Harris and myself can play a duet like we do on a piano. We play jigs. I take the chords and she takes the tune. Then she plays the whole thing and I take up old Nellie and dance. Nellie was Mrs. Harris's beautiful cow. And when she took the colic and died, Mrs. Harris had her skinned and put her on the floor. <laughs> that skinny turned old Nellie from a cow into a rug. Two little boys taught me how to do that kind of dancing down on the station platform waiting for my father's train to come. They taught me the buck and the wing and spread the eagle. I hope my little brothers have grown since they've been in heaven. If they can't walk yet, I bet carrying, around, carrying them around in heaven will sure make my back tired. Everybody grows wings in heaven, and then I can fly, and that will be wonderful. I haven't decided just yet where I will go. Miss Ruby Porter says Paris is just beautiful this time of spring. Maybe I'll go there. I sure hope I don't get ready for the trip and then start molting like my canary bird. <laughs> I sure will need all my feathers to get across the ocean and back again to heaven. I sure am glad that Jesus is going to be in heaven, because if I get in trouble, he will be there to help me out. When my mother sews on her Wilcox and Gibbs, she sings, What a friend we have in Jesus. I sure hope she knows what she's singing about. Heaven sure is far away and hard to get to. You don't hear much talk about heaven. You just hope you get there, and I'm sure doing my very best. I sure hope I make it. But you sure hear plenty about hell at the Baptist church. When I go with Dorothea, that preacher hollers himself right in the face about hell. When you get to hell with your everlasting life, the devil waves his pitchfork and turns it into ever pitchfork and turns into everlasting damnation, and he builds a fire under you, and you wail and gnash your teeth. If poor Mrs. Columbia Stonington ever goes to hell, the devil, sh devil will still be surprised when it comes her time to stand up and gnash her teeth because her dentist pulled all her teeth out. <laughs> he just kept on pulling until they're all gone. <laughs> There's sure going to be a lot of going on in hell. Nero and Herod and Judas and Jezebel will all be there. You sure will meet a lot of interesting people. I sure hope I don't get a horn stuck in me in the mix-up. I have one horn hole in my leg already, but I didn't get it in hell. I got it in Arkansas. <laughs> I was wearing my red sweater, and I didn't get both of my legs over the fence in time. Just one of them. That's why I have a horn, horn hole in the other one. When I got back, I made the kids pay me five cents to see my Arkansas hornhole. <laughs> and I got my mission box full, but I let the bishop see it for free. He was sitting in our parlor waiting for my mother to come downstairs when I told him about my mission box, and I rattled it for him. And he said he had never seen a, I mean, an Arkansas whole hole, hornhole in all his days. And he thought it was well worth 25 cents. So I pulled on my stocking, and he looked real good, and he gave me a quarter. There's not a thing about you can do with your about your everlasting life. You're going to get it, and you have to keep it. God sure it's good to make heaven for us as long as we can't stay dead but have to go somewhere. But why he doesn't do something about the devil and throws up hell, I'll never know. If I have to go to hell, I sure hope I go to the one for the Episcopalians and don't by mistake get pushed into that horn punching and tail wagging hot rip, red hot blazing when the Baptists are going to. <laughs> the Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. God bless the bishop. God bless my mission box. And Jesus be my friend and help me if you can, please. Amen and be it so. The first stanza of 474. <coughs> week was from uh, the parents of a young lady, Carla Ike Schentz, E-I-K-S-C-H-E-N-S. -E uh, they informed me that uh, Carla had applied. They were very pleased that she had been accepted at the college. Uh, she is transferring from Golden Valley. Then the next paragraph informed me that she had been in a car accident and died on February 16th. Please, you know, remove her name from the admissions list. And the, uh, the last uh, paragraph was about how honored Carla had been the family that she had been accepted at this fine school. I've written to those people 
and uh, I extended it to those and the rest, and then in a personal, I said I'd pray for them. And you can remember that. It's, uh, if you can't remember the last name, it's Carla's parents, and they live in Glencoe. We will have a short prayer, and we also want to remember someone who at 11 o'clock today would like your support in prayer. Just remember a fellow student. God, our Father, you see your children growing up in an uncertain and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their worth, but as an opportunity for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. By so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. For the rest of that chapter and into the next and final chapter of Hebrews, the writer speaks of the Christian life, the Christian discipline, and the ways for Christians to persevere. And then comes the concluding benediction. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Repentance, Christian repentance, does not begin with our sorrow. It begins with God's promise to us. The great cloud of witnesses that the writer refers to includes the men and women of faith who before the time of Christ believed God's promise. Now the promise has centered in Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And so proper observance of Lent begins with the Easter that is at the end of Lent. It begins with the promise that Christ's future is our future, whatever our past has been. And if our repentance is repentance, it will go far beyond remorse and sorrow for our sins, counted and uncounted. For repentance looks ahead. It is a turning, always a turning from what has been toward that which will be. In this time of Lent, Repentance is the word of this hour. Indeed, if we share the faith of a Paul and a Luther, it is the word of every day. In our turning, our repeated turning from the death of the past to the life of the promise. Are you sorry for your sins? I expect that you are. I am. But I wouldn't bet my life on, on my sorrow. Christians bet their lives on Christ. There is a life to be lived, even during the 40 days of Lent. This is not a time for us to become mired in our sin, immobilized by the enormity of it all. Looking ahead to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, we can lay aside the weight of sin and run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Repentance is renewal. It is the determination born of God's promise to get on with God's work, freed from the encumbrance of our sin. Repentance is the commitment to the doing of the will of God on earth, today, now, again and again, as we caucus and vote, as we plead and cajole, as we work and interact with each other, as we, in Luther's phrase, become little Christs in our love for one another. Repentance is our response to the promise. What do we say after we've said, I'm sorry? 
We say again in the last part of that same confession, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. into the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you turn us from the old life of sin. Grant that we who are reborn to new life in Christ may live in righteousness and holiness all of our days. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. No, I know. <laughs> Thank you.